Welcome to this Iconic training video. In this video we're looking at vCarve Desktop and we're going to look at working with 3D models. Now vCarve Desktop does not have the ability to design in 3D but what it does have the ability to do is to import and create machining toolpath for an existing 3D model. Uh, it also has several hundred pre-designed 3D models already built into the software. We're going to look at some of those in this video. So let's start by clicking on create a new file. And as you can see in my job setup window, I now get an opportunity to set up my workspace. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to set up my workspace at a width of 12 inches, height of 12 inches. I'm going to use a material thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. My Z or Z0 position is going to be the top of the block, as it uh, always is when we're using our Iconic machine. And my XY datum position, uh, as we have been doing in most of our projects, I'm using the top left corner, which matches the um, home position on the Iconic machine. So we're going to click OK, and you can see that we've got our workspace set up, our reference point being at the top left corner, our origin position. Well, we're next going to go over here to importing vectors from a file. That's in the File Operations section. And actually, if I go back into Documents here, in my Documents library, you see that I have a folder called Vector Files. Uh, if you've installed vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop on your computer, you should have this same file folder called Vector Files in your Documents Library. And when I click on that, you can see I have a clipart library and there are several different categories for the clipart library. Each of these has many different pre-designed 3D models. Let's just click on Animals, for example. You can see here we've got this uh, bass in three different uh, iterations. We've got uh, this uh, cantering Arabian horse in uh, several different iterations. So I'm going to use this uh, cantering Arabian horse. Just double clicking on it and you can see in my window or my viewing screen I have the horse imported or opened up in the software. Uh, I'm just going to go down here to my transform objects and I'm going to center that. And I'm also going to scale it to size. I want to make it a little bit bigger than it currently is. So let's change the width of our Arabian horse to say 8 inches. And we'll click Apply. We'll close that window. Uh, and basically what we're going to do in this particular project is we're going to machine this horse. Um, obviously I could add some text to this. I could create some border around it, do anything that I want. But in this case we're just going to look at machining the 3D model. So we're going to switch now from the drawing side to the toolpaths tab. So as you can see, we have two different 3D toolpaths. We have a 3D roughing toolpath and a 3D finishing toolpath. Uh, we're going to start off with a roughing toolpath. Uh, we, uh, depending on uh, how much area we want to clear with our 3D toolpaths, we may or may not choose to have a roughing toolpath. In this case, I want to machine this as a fairly deep profile, so I'm going to use one. You can see we've got the roughing machining toolpath. First of all, we're going to select the tool that we want. Uh, the default here is a quarter inch end mill. That's good. I, I'm going to use that tool. You see in the machine uh, machining limit boundary we have some options here. One of them is the material boundary which is what I'm going to choose to use here. So basically I'm going to machine the entire surface area but one of the options that vCarve offers us is a boundary offset. Now if I want to use this boundary offset um, I can do so in either in a negative or a positive value. So I'm going to set this as a negative value at minus half an inch, which means I'm going to machine inside the border of this material by half inch. I particularly find that important if I am machining, and on the Iconic machine I have typically got a fence on the left-hand side. Usually I'll have some clamps either at the top or bottom or even on the right-hand side. So if I'm going to machine the entire surface of this, of course, the tool is going to run off to the very edge and it potentially is going to hit either my fence or my clamps. Um, so I'm going to leave myself this little half inch border all the way around uh, with this boundary offset to eliminate that problem. And you'll see when we do the simulation how that works. Uh, our machining allowance, we've got a 40 thousandths of an inch machining allowance, which is a pretty liberal machining allowance. It's basically um, because it's a roughing tool path, we don't want to really get too tight with the machining allowance. Um, we're going to leave a little bit of material behind because we've got a finishing tool that's going to come and clean it up at the end. Uh, we're going to use this Z-level um, or Z-level machining strategy. You see we have the option of raster X uh, or raster Y options. 
I tend to like to machine along the X so that when I'm raster machining or going back and forth, left to right, right to left, I prefer to do that rather than going from the top to the bottom of the machine. I just find that it's a uh, machine doesn't have to work as hard when it's just traveling, when the tool's just traveling along the gantry. I'm not going to have any rapid plunge moves here. That's not necessary. And then I'm just going to calculate. And you will see that it's created the roughing toolpath and it's given us this half inch border around the edge. So we're going to close that roughing toolpath. And now we're going to go to the finishing toolpath. And you see that we have the default here being the eighth inch ball nose. I'm going to change that because there's a fair bit of detail. And you can see that in our engraving tools, we have a 1 32nd tapered ball nose. And we're going to select that tool. And we are going to calculate that. And you can see down here in the bottom of my screen, it's showing me that it is calculating. It's going to take a few seconds because this is an extensive amount of um, G-code that's being generated in this particular 3D model. Uh, it's a fair size model and there's a lot of detail in this horse. And as you can see, our finishing toolpath has been created. Uh, on the illustration, it's sort of showing just a solid uh, block of blue, and that's because we've machined every square inch of this area, so it's, it's just completely filled up. If I rotate this on the side, sometimes you can see a little bit more detail in the 3D model if I zoom in on it. Last thing that we want to do, of course, is we want to run a simulation or a preview. So we are going to preview all toolpaths. And so there you can see there's the roughing toolpath being created in several passes, the finishing toolpath being created uh, in a single pass. And when we're done, we have created our horse and we can zoom in and out. We can rotate it, look at it from several different angles. And we've created our toolpath. Now we're ready to save our toolpath. So we can close the preview window. We're going to go down here to save toolpath. Uh, you can see that we're going to output all visible toolpaths to one file. So we're going to create both the roughing toolpath and the finishing toolpath as a single file. And we're using our post processor GTEC uh, ATC or auto tool change inches. And it's the NC file that we're going to be generating. And the last thing is we want to make sure that we've selected all the toolpaths in the list. So we're doing both the roughing toolpath and the finishing toolpath. And lastly, we want to save that toolpath, and typically we would save that straight to our flash drive. Um, and you see I don't have a flash drive in this particular computer, so I'm just going to put this on my desktop. We'll call it Horse. And we'll save that file. And as you can see, I've already created a horse.nc file, so I've just overwritten it. And so we've created that. That's now ready to be machined. Uh, last step in the process is, uh, as you've seen us do in previous videos, if we wanted to create a G file, we would open iPicture and convert that NC file to a G file that would activate the border function on the CNC machine, on the iconic CNC. So that is the completion of this video, uh, walking through the basic operation of importing a 3D model. As I mentioned, there are about 300 or so pre-designed 3D models in a vCarve desktop. And of course, there are a plethora of um, online services that will offer you other uh, options with regards to 3D models. Uh, Vectric themselves uh, has a website called Vector Art 3D, where you can purchase individual 3D models on a per piece basis. And they can range in price anywhere from a few dollars, uh, maybe five or ten dollars, all the way up to as high as a hundred dollars for a very detailed 3D model. And then there's also subscription-based services, one uh, called Vector Clip 3D, where you would pay an annual subscription, and that will give you access to everything in their library. Um, so there's lots and lots of options for 3D models. Of course, ultimately for some uh, users, uh, you want to start looking at uh, being able to create your own 3D models. Uh, not necessarily everybody is interested in doing that, but for those of you that can or do want to, um, there are some op uh, several options with regards to 3D design software. Vectric um, offers one called Aspire. And then, of course, ArtCam has uh, their ArtCam standard uh, software, 1A 
full permanent license and the other one an annual subscription. If you want more details on uh, any of those products, you can certainly reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer them. And as we always uh, end our videos, just to remind you that we are here uh, to serve you and to help you in your CNC journey. So if you need us for anything, whether it's machine related, software related, if you have any questions at all, any concerns or you're just struggling with the project, you can reach us many different ways. You can reach us through our website at IconicCNC.com. Go to the support page, um, fill in one of our online support requests and we'll be more than happy to help you. You can reach us by email. It's either Jeremy or Steve at IconicCNC.com or you can reach us on our toll free number. That's 1-800-288-2961. Again, that's 1-800-288-2961. We're always here to help in any way that we can. It's always our mandate and our goal to make your CNC experience both enjoyable and productive.